What I want to say is, through growing up, what I've discovered is that this world is a very vast, a very wonderful and beautiful one, and there are so many things to discover. But the most important journey I think all of us will go through is the journey in ourselves, to find our truth, to find who we are and what makes us happy. And in our culture, we are told that if we're beautiful, if we're skinny, if we're successful, famous, if we fit in, um, if everyone loves us, that we'll be happy. But that's not entirely true. Um, and this is what I want to talk about, basically. I'm going to start with a poem that I wrote <laughs> when I wasn't very happy. Um, I actually wrote this a year ago, but again, as if you know depression, it comes back. It's a reoccurring thing that you can't really sort away. Anyway, <clears throat> who am I? Who am I trying to be? Not myself, anyone but myself. Living in a fantasy to bury the reality, making myself the mystery, a strong facade disguising the misery. Empty but beyond the point of emptiness full to the brim of fake confidence, a guard that will never be broken because I broke a long time ago. I'm hurting, but don't tell anyone. No one needs to know. Don't show or you've failed. Always okay, always fine, always on show. The show must go on, it will never stop. The show must not go on, but I know it will. I give up, I give up giving up, I am lost. I don't need to be saved, I need to be found. Basically, it's kind of just, <laughs> the same reoccurring thing of, uh, yeah, not knowing who you are and, and feeling. I, again, so yeah, this started when I was about 15 years old. I was at school. Um, I really wanted to do well at school to please my parents, to please my family. I didn't really care that much about school because I knew I was never going to be very good at it. Um, I think I pushed myself so far, got to the point where I had a bit of a mental breakdown. I was one of those people that just like, just did enough work. Mm. But again, I yeah, probably, I I um I have very bad learning disabilities. Though, if you look at my writing, it's it's not it's not it's not good at all. It's probably like a nine-year-old boy, if you know what that looks like. Um, but I was you know just pushing past. Uh, yeah, so I got to the point where I went a bit mad. I was completely suicidal. Didn't want to live anymore. I thought that I was completely alone. I also realized how lucky I was and what a wonderful family, wonderful friends I had, but that didn't matter. I wanted the world to swallow me up and nothing seemed better to me than death, which is completely insane. So I got taken out of school, went to therapy, got put on antidepressants, kind of clawed my way back to some sort of um, rational thought, which took a while. But basically I, I stayed in school until I was 17 where I still was kind of played with this depression and I was like, I'm done, I need to leave, which to the rather large disagreement from my parents, I was, I, I did, I left and I knew I had to do something because otherwise I would just go crazy. So I started modeling. There was elements which were fun because it's like this camaraderie of people not being successful and you can complain about all the people who are rude to you. But it's not, it wasn't nice. It, you constantly are told that you're not pretty enough and not tall enough and not skinny enough and people are better and when you're young you think that means I'm not good enough as a person like that means I'm not living up to who I should be and you kind of get battered and bruised a lot but then you, you kind of grow a bit of a skin. What were the agencies like? What was an agency like? Because I always think they're quite macabre things. Yeah, I mean the thing with models is they... Uh, you get used. That's the thing. I saw a lot of um, misuse from photographers, you know, perverse photographers to young girls. A lot of straight photographers only really do this because they want to sleep with young models. Um, you know, bad, bad kind of experiences in that sense, not by me, but to other poor people, poor girls who don't stand up for themselves because you feel like you should be used because that's what models do. Um, um, but then, you know, about a year into it, I was discovered. I did Burberry and then everybody wants you. You know, after so long of being like, nobody wants you, suddenly like, oh my God, who's that? I was like, I've met you five times and I'm pretty sure you didn't want me two minutes ago. But cool. I had no concept of saying no to anyone, ever. Um, and this is one of the most important show business lessons, actually, learning how to say no. Have you learned yet? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think life, you should always experience things, but you should not, you should say no. I mean, it's more about being control and not being a puppet is what the most important thing is. And not doing anything out, not doing anything for anyone else apart from yourself. Because after a while, I just started to get sick and I got this horrible thing called psoriasis. You look at yourself like you're an alien. You're like, I'm so disgusting. It's not good for you, especially at that time. I felt more disconnected from myself than I think I ever had, which I was for a long time, quite disconnected. Um, and, and as how well... Do, how the, do you cure something like that? Cause it's quite well, my agency were like... Because usually you have to take time to fix internal problems, like it's food and stress. And, but, you know, they shoved me straight into a doctor who would inject cortisone into each spot, which dyed them, but not really. And, they, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. It's like all those problems I had, I feel like I masked with medicine instead of taking the time to really solve them. But at that time, I really wanted someone to stop me. I wanted someone to go, you need to take a break, you need to look after yourself. And no one did, because Would you have I was to the one anyway? who had it all. Like, I was... I had what everyone wanted. Would so you have surely listened I should to them, have been happy. Think? Yes. You would? Yeah, of course I would have. That's what I wanted. Oh, it was more like the external life. I couldn't be lucky or more blessed, but the internal battles that were going on were just... I also felt like I never deserved any of it, that I was living someone else's dream. It, this point is just about, like, being able to show, like, have a mirror up at yourself and really look inside for what you need. And what happened was I eventually said no, and I eventually took a break. But yeah, so I said no, I went, I started writing. Writing was something that really saved my life. Um, again, so that pro poem probably came out then. It was like I would write, and I would read what I'd written, and it was like someone else was talking to me. I was like, what, is that how I feel? It was a very strange experience. Um, and then after that, I found yoga which was a huge thing for me. I didn't cry a lot. I thought emotion as a kid was a weakness. I thought that if you are emotional, that like, you know, that's like, a pan, like just a silly thing to feel. Um, and when I went to yoga, I, went, I started yoga as a superficial thing because I was like, I want to be flexible and fit, you know, like cool yoga people are. And I went in to my yoga, meet my guru, yoga person, and, and, um, he was like, why are you doing this? And I told him why, and he sat me down and we just started chanting. And I was like, are we not meant to be doing like whatever? So I was chanting. I got so angry with myself. No oh God. <laughs> and I broke through something and I burst into tears, which I hadn't done in years. And I looked at him and I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? How dare you, you're a monster, why would you do this? And he was just laughing at me. And I was like, you're a crazy man, what is wrong with you? And he said, if you hadn't have cried, I would have been very worried. And I was like, okay. He was like, and also you realize that this is the first time you've actually looked at me in the eye. And the reason why is because I knew when I looked in his eyes that he saw through me and he knew me and it freaked me out. But till this day, I've been seeing him a lot. It's like finding, finding people around you who have your best interest at heart. I had a lot of people around me who were just after what I gave them, not like, you know, after like looking after you and stuff. So it's about finding people who care about you and support. Um, and again, I've now become and been able to be a support for other people as well. So in turn, that kind of goes around. When I was a kid, I always wanted to change the world because all kids think they're going to be superheroes. But I have so many messages in terms of just young girls and how the mental illness and depression is not something to be ashamed of. And I wish at that time I had realized that other people go through it, that I can talk to other people, that you're not alone, you're not an alien. Um, and, you know, my message has always been to accept yourself no matter what, to love yourself, to embrace your flaws. I think flaws are the things that make us special. The cracks within us are the beautiful parts that need to have light shed on them, otherwise they're just left. Um, and also women. Oh, great. They're wonderful, wonderful creatures. Women are the bearer of life. And I think it took an experience um, of going to a talk by a woman who dealt with so much. Um, you know, like, all these women here are so incredible. Like, the last talk, you know, I watched her on YouTube and it made me cry. And we witnessed these extreme experiences that happen to women, suppression and all these other things. But really, that happens every day, and we're all used to it in the workplace, in relationships. Women are constantly suppressed, but it takes an extreme circumstance for us to realize it, because we're used to it. And that always confuses me a lot. But obviously, I think we're changing that now, slowly but surely. 
but yeah, just the point of like supporting each other and reaching out and communicating, it's the most important thing. Mm. So I want to help, basically. I don't know how, if anyone has any suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> when I got my first audition that I cared about, I cried my eyes out because I never thought I was going to be taken seriously. I never thought I was going to be an actor at all or a model or anything. I think as well, I have so many girls come up to me and tell me that they want to be models, which is fine. It's not a bad thing. I just think there's so much to do. I just went to a wonderful talk about um, genetic engineering and neuroscience, and this man who was giving the talk explained that these like 10,000 kids is from the age of 7 to 13 who are doing neuroscience. They do these competitions and wonderful things, and they're doing things in neuroscience which haven't been, which weren't done by him until he was like 30. Like how quickly things like that are changing, and. But they're not, there is an awareness brought to cool stuff like that. Like, that sounds way cooler to me than being a model. But, like, no one really knows about it. And I just think there are just so many things. I always say to girls, just dream, just dream bigger. Go for president. Just keep going up. Astronauts, I don't know. 